Let's turn to Dr. Anthony Fauci now, a key member of the White House Coronavirus Task Force, director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, and widely considered the top disease expert in America. Sir, it's an honor to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. We heard Jane Wells reporting there from Iowa. We've heard you. If everybody wears a mask, everything gets better. But COVID has become as tribal, sir, as our politics. Some will wear them, some won't. If we don't change and make masks mostly universal in America, what are we facing this fall and winter? I think we're facing a whole lot of trouble. And the reason I say that, I think you uh, indicated in the lineup for the show. And that is we have a baseline of infections now that vary between 40 and 50,000 per day. That's a bad place to be when you're going into the cooler weather of the fall and the colder weather of the winter. In addition, we would like to see the percent positivity be coming down. And unfortunately, if you look at the states of the country, the Midwest, the Northwest, the states that you mentioned, including Iowa, instead of seeing it go in the other direction, down, we're seeing an increase in test positivity. So you combine an increase in test positivity, which is always a predictor of more cases and ultimately more hospitalizations and ultimately more death. And you combine that with a baseline of 40, 45, 50,000 new cases a day as you go into a weather system where you're going to be spending more time indoors rather than outdoors, which is a perfect setup for an acceleration of respiratory-borne diseases, that is unquestionably a problem. So that's what the concern that I have and that so many of my fellow public health officials have. We're in a bad place now. We've got to turn this around. Dr. Fauci, you've been sidelined. Your briefings have been canceled. Your television appearance is limited by the White House. Your words taken out of context in a campaign ad just the other day by the president. In hindsight, doctor, have you put up with too much? Well, I don't know what you mean by put up with too much. I mean, obviously, there are a lot of things that are going on that you would prefer did not happen, like the ad which put me in a political context, which I spent my entire career staying out of political context. That's not helpful. But I, I'm certainly not going to give up. This is too important a problem. I mean, I've devoted my entire professional life to fighting infectious diseases. This is an outbreak of historic proportions, the likes of which we have not seen in 102 years. There's no chance that I'm going to give up on this and walk away from it no matter what happens. Doctor, you're a trained scientist. Have, have there been times when you, when you felt like, I, I, I just can't handle this? I know what's right. I'm telling people what's right. And then we're getting other messages that make no sense. Well, that's a problem. There's no doubt about it. You can't run away from that. But that doesn't mean you give up. You've got to keep hammering out the correct public health message. If we do five fundamental things, universal wearing of masks, maintaining physical distance, avoiding congregate settings or crowds, as it were, doing things more outdoors as opposed to indoors, and washing hands frequently. Those simple things, as simple as they sound, can certainly turn around the spikes that we see and can prevent new spikes from occurring. We know that. that we, we know that because our experience has proven to us that that is the case. We just need to hunker down and do that. You, you have tried to fight this mask tribalism in the past. What, have you thought of any new ways to convince going forward? Because it sounds from all you've said, it's an urgent matter. Well, I can't think of any new creative way to do that, Chef. The only thing I could say is that we've got to keep trying to impress upon people. And I have a great deal of faith in the American people and their ability to realize when we're facing a significant problem, we've got to convince them that public health measures is not meaning to shut the, the, the country down. We're not talking about shutting anything down. We're talking about using public health measures as a vehicle or a gateway to keeping the country open, to keeping the economy going. It is not an obstacle. It's actually an avenue to keeping the country open. But, but Dr. If science, we can convince people of that, we're in good shape. Science-based restrictions make sense to you? Well, yeah, they do. I mean, but you don't want to do it in such an offensive way that people, you know, pull back from it. You've got to understand 
that people do need to have some leeway to do the things that are important for their livelihood. That's why I always sure. stay away from we're not talking about shutting down the country, but we're talking about prudent, careful, serious public health considerations like wearing a mask, like avoiding congregate settings. That's not very difficult to do, and it should not interfere with getting the economy open again. The president tweeted about an hour and a half ago, Dr. Fauci, that Democratic governors should open their states right now. He singled out Andrew Cuomo of New York. In New York, three weeks ago, we had, the number of average cases per day over, over the week, three weeks ago, was 855. Last week, it was 1,294. The, 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 well, three weeks ago, it was 855. Two weeks ago, it was 1,294. Last week, it was 1,400. Do our restrictions need to drop? Do we need to open up, as the president suggests? Well, you know, the New, New York, after they getting hit really, really badly uh, months and months ago, they did very well in keeping the level of infection, the test positivity down. They're trying to open up, which we're all trying to do, and they're seeing an uptick in cases. What they've got to do is to just turn, you know, hunker down, as I say, which means make sure people do the things that we're talking about. If they do that, they don't need to shut down completely. They need to gradually and carefully open up. And I believe that's what Governor Cuomo is trying to do. It is, but that's not what the president's telling him to do. And that's confusing, not just for leaders, for everyone. Right. How, how, well, do you, how do you stay so focused and what, what do we need to be doing? Well, we need to be doing exactly what I just said. And not what I, the president I, you know, said. I, I, well, you know, Governor Cuomo is going to do what he's going to do because he has a lot of experience in that. I just think that we need to focus on the four or five fundamental things that we need to do. We got into trouble when we tried to open up the economy and several states decided it was going to be an all or none phenomenon. Either they were going to lock down or open up completely. And that doesn't work. That's the reason why the task force, of which I am a member, put together some guidelines where there was a gateway before you start decreasing, then phase one, phase two, and phase three, a gradual way of carefully and prudently opening. This all or none phenomenon, either stay shut or pull, you know, just throw caution to the wind, doesn't work. And we've proven it doesn't work. So the, the prudent way and the careful way we know will, in fact, gut us open and will do it in a safe way. We're all friends and family members and we all have neighbors. And how do we help those who don't understand your message to somehow understand if you put on that mask, we're all going to be so much healthier? Right. I think we need to appear, appeal, excuse me, appeal to the better angels of which I know exist in our society. Because when you prevent yourself from getting infected, you do it not only to help yourself, but you do it because you want to not propagate the outbreak. If you say to yourself, I don't care if I get infected, I'm a young person, the chances of my getting seriously ill are very low, so to heck with it, I'm in a vacuum, let me get infected and enjoy whatever it is I want to enjoy. The problem with that is that by doing that, you are inadvertently, and I'll use the word innocently, propagating the outbreak. Because although the infection may not hurt you because you're young and healthy, you will almost invariably infect someone else who will infect someone else who will then infect a vulnerable person. That can be someone's grandfather. That can be a woman who's on chemotherapy for breast cancer. That could be an immunodeficient child. So we've got to stop thinking that we exist in a vacuum only for ourselves. We're all in this together. We're all part of a society that's either going to get hurt or that's going to get helped by our actions. So we want to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. Thank you for that wisdom. I've, I've talked to a lot of mighty important doctors, Dr. Fauci, over just the last few days and over the last week, and every single one of them agrees we need Dr. Fauci. Would you commit, even upon this president's reelection, to staying with us through the next term? Oh, absolutely. I'm not going to walk away from this outbreak, no matter who's the president. That's all I need to hear. Dr. Fauci, thank you so much. All the best to you and yours. Thank you very much, Chef. Thank you for having me on your show.
Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.